The film opens outside a mansion where a group of college friends gathering for Elise's birthday. Among them are Haley, Grant, Paxton, Paige, Elise, Madeline, and Lucas. During a drinking game, the ex-couple, Harriet and Grant, subtly reveal to their friends that they broke up on the way to the mansion. They share their concern that their relationship is heading in different directions. After running out of beer, the friends scoured the house for hidden booze until stumbling upon a secret room. Inside, they discovered a collection of mysterious artifacts, including a wooden box adorned with a zodiac wheel. Within the box lay a deck of beautifully hand-painted tarot cards. Haley, the most knowledgeable about tarot cards among them, was persuaded to do readings for the group despite her uneasy feeling. As each friend received their reading, Elise with the High Priestess, Madeline with the Hanged Man, Paige with the Magician, Lucas with the Hermit, and Paxton with the Fool, ominous predictions and hints of future events were revealed. Even Grant, who resisted participating, had a foreboding message tied to the Devil card. Haley's own reading, marked by the Death card, hinted at a tragic fate linked to love. Before they could fully digest the unsettling readings, a series of haunting images manifested, hinting at the reawakening of an ancient evil. The group leaves the mansion and heads back to their campus. On the way, Lucas stops at a gas station and wins $700 from a scratch card. Upon returning home, Paige and Elise, who are in a relationship, chat on the phone. Suddenly, Elise hears strange noises coming from her attic. As she investigates, she notices the ladder has come down and sees a shadow moving around. When she looks up, she finds candles lit everywhere and is confronted by a monstrous vision of the High Priestess from her card. Elise falls from the ladder as the High Priestess attacks her, slamming the ladder down onto her until it crushes and impales her. Elise's friends, especially Paige, mourn her death. Haley stays with her and tries to comfort her by telling Paige that she originally got into tarot readings when her mother was sick with cancer. Haley tried to find any reading that would tell her of good fortune, but every reading she did resulted in death. Lucas escorts Madeline home, their evening filled with a sense of potential romance. Despite this, they simply share a hug before Lucas departs for the subway station. Suddenly, the hermit appears and plans to go after Lucas, following a tarot prediction that Haley had read before. When Lucas was walking at the train station, he suddenly noticed the abrupt flickering of the station's lights. But as soon as he was about to head towards his train, suddenly Hermit appeared in front of him and swiftly brought darkness towards him. However, Lucas put his foot to flee, and in another part of the station, suddenly Lucas's eyes caught a newspaper that read, You will die today. Suddenly Hermit with his ugly face passed by him, and Lucas ran away from him again, seeking refuge inside a train carriage. But again, Hermit appeared with a lantern in his hand, and amidst this terrifying chase and escape, suddenly sneaking up from behind, Hermit caught him off guard, causing Lucas to fall towards the train tracks, and at that moment a train swiftly ran him over, leading to his gruesome and horrifying death. Haley and Grant were talking about their grief over losing their friend Elise, when they suddenly received a message that Lucas, too, had mysteriously been hit by a train. They were then questioned by the police, and it seemed bizarre to them to think that Lucas, with his good spirits, might have had suicidal intentions. Later, the group gathered again, discussing the deaths of their friends, and even Paxton suggested that one of them may have been involved, sparking strong opposition from everyone. Haley discovers a chilling pattern linking Elise and Lucas's deaths to their tarot readings. Desperate for answers, research leads her to Alma Astrum. She uncovers her ominous reputation in such matters. Alongside Grant, Paxton, Page, and Madeline, Haley seeks out Alma for guidance. Initially rebuffed, Alma's curiosity is piqued when Haley reveals the eerie connection haunting their lives. Alma brings the teenagers in and quickly realizes that the deaths are connected to specific tarot cards from the same box they found. She informs them that whenever people have used these cards for readings, they have met their demise. Alma, having survived a similar series of deaths in London, shares that the cards have a dark history dating back to the 1700s. A wealthy count once summoned an astrologer named Sunsika Milanovic to read the cards for his ailing wife and child. The readings foretold death, and when the countess and her child passed away, the count falsely accused the astrologer of witchcraft. 
In a fit of sorrow and fury, the astrologer cursed the cards and bound her spirit to them before taking her own life. She then performed a fatal reading on the Count and his men, leading to their gruesome deaths. Alma advises the teens to locate the deck and eradicate it to break the curse. Paige plans to retrace their steps through the mansion to find their way back and confront the mysterious presence on the deck. As they make their way back, a sense of dread creeps over the group as they fear who might be the next target. While crossing a bridge, Grant's car suddenly loses power and comes to a stop. A chilling image of a hangman materializes on the fogged-up window, causing Madeline to realize that she is the next victim. Although Madeline's fortune suggested that she tends to flee from danger, the group decides to defy fate and stay together to avoid their impending deaths. Despite their plan, Madeline ignores their advice and runs out of the car with Haley following closely behind. Grant, Paxton, and Paige abandon the car as another sinister entity approaches them. Madeline continues to run until she is ensnared by the hanged man's noose, ending up hanging in front of her horrified friends. After the group fled from this terrifying incident, Paxton suddenly refrains from accompanying them and goes back to campus. There he is pursued by another being from inside the tarot, namely the Fool. Out of fear, he enters a building and gets into an elevator. Suddenly he comes face to face with this being again. Terrified, he tries to close the elevator's door, but each time the Fool's mask changes, alternating between being happy and angry. Suddenly he doesn't see it anymore, but at one point the elevator light turns red and it attacks him. However, we don't have any idea about his fate thereafter. The other three make it back to the mansion and find the deck. They throw it into the fireplace but find that the cards do not burn. Alma arrives to join them and help. They attempt to conduct a seance where Alma would try to contact the astrologer's spirit. This results in the astrologer doing Alma's reading, drawing the Six of Swords card. Alma is pulled into the darkness and later re-emerges dead with six swords in her back. Haley and Grant run away while Paige is split off from the group and stalked by the magician. She finds herself in an audience where the magician uses her as his unwitting assistant. Paige is trapped in a box and ends up sawed in half. Haley and Grant hide as they wait for their killers to come get them. She tells him that before they started dating, she did a reading that said their relationship wouldn't work out, but she ignored it. Before they broke up, she did another reading and was told the same thing. Soon, the devil shows up to pull Grant through a window while Haley is stalked by death. The death were found, and wherever Haley went, it followed, as if she had no way to escape. Suddenly, death caught her, and before it could succeed in suffocating her, she was saved by Grant. Then, Grant was knocked unconscious by the devil, and it seemed like he was being dragged towards hell by the devil. Haley reaches the deck and realizes that to break the curse, she must perform the astrologer's reading. Drawing the death card, she uses the moment to release her grief for her mother and convinces the astrologer to do the same for her daughter. Grant intervenes to shield Haley as a surge of energy destroys the astrologer's spirit, the cards bursting into flames. In a fleeting vision, the astrologer reunites with her daughter in the afterlife. Haley and Grant walk away from the mansion hand in hand, spotting a car approaching. They tense up, thinking it might be another spirit, until they see Paxton stepping out of the car, safe and sound. Relief washes over them as they embrace him, realizing his premonition about being there for his friends has come true. On the way home, Paxton reveals that he survived thanks to his roommate Todd, who intervened and caused the fool to vanish. With the curse lifted, Grant suggests they have the power to shape their destinies, but Haley defiantly declares, screw fate. 